Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Pumped to share this one with you today and we're going to be covering everything nose riding. So I've been coaching nose riding for a fair while now and have been doing it myself for even longer and we're going to be covering all the important points to get you where you need to be with your nose riding whether it's something that you're wanting to learn or whether you've been doing it for a while now. We're going to be covering all things equipment, so what boards are best for nose riding, what fins are best as well. We're going to be doing a play-by-play -play analysis to show you where you need to be positioned on the wave. There's two really important positions that I think we need to know about. And then we're also going to go for a surf out in the water and focus on technique. So let's get into that now. And just quickly, if you are new here, my name's Ben Considine, and I'm a longboard enthusiast, a competitor, coach, and I'm here to share my learnings and experiences like this one today with you all. So if you do find the video enjoyable or valuable, please feel free to subscribe. And if you know anyone who might find it useful as well, feel free to share it with them. But let's get straight into the edit. Yo! Let's get into a bit of a discussion around what longboards are best for nose rides. The first thing that I did want to point out, so number one, is a lot of the time we think that the nose is where all the magic happens for our nose riders, but it's actually at the tail. Now the reason is the tail is what actually gets pressed into the water to hold the board in when we're up that end. And we want a lot of lift up there so that we can get our nose rides even better. So for the tail, we actually want a fair bit of rocker or lift at the tail here. The reason being, it's kind of like a, a seesaw effect. So if there's more lift here, we can press the tail of the board down and then we can have that nose lift, which is exactly what creates great nose rides. So we want a fair bit of kick at the tail or rocker. Now, I really like a fair bit of width in the tail. It's not absolutely necessary, but it just provides a little bit more uh, stability at the back end um, and then also provides more surface area for that water to push down on. Now, number two here is just going to be the nose. And typically it's the same thing for the nose of the longboard. So we want a little bit of a lift at that top end. So a little bit of a nose lift, just so that we can minimize our risk of nose diving as well. This doesn't mean we need a whole lot of rocker throughout the whole board, um, but it is important to have a bit of lift at the nose there as well. From here is where the conversation gets a little bit contentious and it really comes down to uh, personal preferences for nose rides. But I think it's really important to make the differentiation between someone who is looking to learn to nose ride and improve their nose riding versus someone who is looking for the more technical aspects of their nose riding game where they're wanting to lock in really, really critical and things like that. For beginners or people who are learning to nose ride or learning to progress their nose riding, it's really important, I believe, to have a board that is a bit more heavily rockered. Like this one here, it does have a fair bit of rocker. And this one really came from a wadden something that was very user-friendly, that could nose ride insanely well in anything. Um, and this is the design that we came up with. And the, the reason that it works so well is because it does have a fair bit of rocker. So it's ability to nose ride on shouldery sections, able to maintain our nose ride length because we could get through those sections on the nose and it wouldn't nose dive straight away. And there's such a big platform here. So you can see from the tail all the way through to the nose, it's such a wide platform. Now this is awesome for your stability in walking to the nose. But then as we get to the nose itself, it provides just such a big safe platform uh, it's not intimidating at all, it's super user friendly so that we can actually spend our time and feel confident getting to the nose. And again, the heavy rocker throughout the whole board, as well as the nose lift, the tail lift, means that when we get to the nose, even if it is a fairly shouldery section, it provides us with a lot of safety, so it's not necessarily just going to nose dive like a flatter board might. But a reason that we might go for a flatter board, a flatter board can actually sit in the pocket easier. A narrower board will also help as well, and you'll actually be 
able to get some more in the hook locked in nose rides because of this. So some of the other boards that I surf aren't this wide um, and I really, really enjoy those for those reasons because you can actually lock into the nose and get really, really critical and deep and it just has that really nice locked in feeling. You can think if the nose isn't as wide and the uh, rails aren't as wide, then you can kind of sit yourself in the curl a little bit easier. What they won't do though is they won't be as user friendly and especially for people who are learning or are in the intermediate phases, especially of their nose riding, is where we can experience a lot of frustration because those boards aren't necessarily inclined to nose ride on the shouldery sections or anywhere but the perfect critical spot, which is where we want to be, but difficult to get into. So I really, really think that you can gain a lot of confidence on something that's a little bit wider, has a little bit more friendly support to it with the rocker, with the width. And then as we come into more experienced and advanced stages of our nose riding, we can definitely get into moving on to something that's a bit narrower, a bit flatter. All right, so let's talk fins. This is just a few of what I've got, um, but obviously if we're talking about our nose riding and making our nose riding better, we will be steering towards the traditional longboard side of things, so single fins. If we're talking about two plus ones or thrusters, uh, it won't be necessarily what is absolute best for the nose riding. So let's talk about single fins and what we can do with our fins to make it as best as possible for our nose riding. Guess we should unpack these. <laughs> Alright, so let's get talking about our fins. Um, so as a blank statement at the start, I do think that if we're talking about single fins for nose riding, I probably wouldn't go anything under 9 inches in terms of the fin height, and I think we can get a lot of value with a bigger fin. But let's start off with the basics. So essentially, if we're thinking about a big nose ride fin and what it looks like, it looks like this big pivot fin here. You can see super wide, it carries that width all the way through the rake there, and there's not a lot of rake, so it's a fairly upright tall fin. And that's essentially the pivot design and what we're expecting there. Now, the reason something like this is so good is because it just has so much width. And if you think about where nose riding, how are we going to kick that out of the water? How much force and power the wave is going to need to be able to disengage the tail and the fins? So something like this is uh, going to be that standard uh, nose ride fin. Now it does have limitations in terms of uh, carving uh, turns and everything like that and holding the rail engagement when you're uh, going through big turns. That's where some of these other variations can come into play. A lot of the time for our longboards, we can have something that's a bit more of a standard greeno shape where it has that nice big rake, not a lot of width, but this is a little bit more finicky and it will move and be displaced by the wave if we've got a big powerful critical section and this is where we come into our hybrids so this is one of my favorite ones um, this is my personal fin with sea swords um, and you can see with this one here that it has a bit of a rake as well as keeping that width down the bottom so it has that pivot style but it does have a little bit of rake too I really like the rake because this is what is going to allow uh, through a turn that fin to hold really, really nicely. That greeno style rake, obviously not nearly as exaggerated in this fin, but it is uh, playing to, to both strengths with the, the rake as well as keeping that pivot style where it's um, got a lot of base through it. So this is a lot of fun. I do like something uh, like this. This is a 10 inch and it um, really is good for uh, being able to maintain your turns, but Today we're talking about the nose rides and it's fantastic for that as well. Won't have as much hold as uh, the big fin that we had over here before, but it's still got quite a lot. And then we come into something else, which is a little bit more of a greeno style. Um, it's got a, it's a little bit softer, um, still has a fair bit of width down the bottom, but it really does thin out quite a lot towards the top there. So again, this is just a, a nice balance of the greeno style, tending towards that a little bit more, um, but still has a fair bit of width to it. I guess if you compare it to this one here, but these fins though, they are vastly different. See how big that one is in comparison. So, um, yeah, but I say now let's get into some of the details around positioning on the wave and there's two things that I'd really like to break down for you here. All right guys, so it's time to get into some really interesting stuff and this is where to position on the wave for our nose rides. Now there's two different answers here and this is where things get a little bit tricky. 
I find quite often with a lot of the people that I coach having these yes but conversations where we get something and we get it right, but there's always these considerations and variations because of the nuances of surfing. So we can either be high on the wave in front of the section or where the wave is breaking, so in front of the peak, or we can be underneath where the wave is breaking. And this is where it can be correct where we need to be at the bottom of the wave. But let's go through the two different answers and some examples here now. So you can see with this example here, it's a bit of a softer wave and I'm fairly out onto the shoulder, just weaving with some cutback to start with and looking for the nose ride. Because I am ahead of where the wave is breaking or ahead of the peak, I want to be nice and high. You'll see if I drop too low, I'm gonna be down near the flats. And because I'm on the shoulder as well, the way that the board will naturally be going uh, to carry its speed is it will be heading downwards. So it'll be a downward trajectory on the wave. And so if we do go to the nose when we're too low on the wave in this instance, out on the shoulder, ahead of the peak, this is where we're gonna nose dive. So we want to definitely be up on the very top third of the wave if we're going to nose ride. And this is what you'd see for the most part. Now, what advanced longboarders are really, really good at doing and what our logs and allow us to do as well is get really deep and critical in the pocket as well. And so that's where we come into the example of something like this example here, where I'm actually dropping into the section. As it gets more critical, I actually wanna come nice and low and underneath the peak. If we're underneath the peak, it's likely that we're going to be traveling with our board exactly across the wave. So we're not gonna have that same negative trajectory. And there's going to be enough weight on the tail for us to be underneath the peak, low on the wave, but still having that lift of the nose. Um, so it's the difference here between being ahead of the peak or behind it. If we're behind it, we can be lower. And then as we shoot ourselves out in front of the section, we can climb up the wave onto the uh, top third of the wave. And this is what the really experienced surfers are great at doing. Whilst they're still on the nose, depending on uh, their position on the wave, they can navigate up and down to put themselves higher where they need to or lower than when they need to. You can see with this last example here, it's a sort of critical section, but I am ahead of the peak and I'm doing everything I can leaning on that inside rail to try and keep myself nice and high. And because I've managed to keep myself high in the wave, this hang 10 has just extended out so much more than it would have otherwise. Because again, the tendency for the board is going to be wanting to drop down the face of the wave. And if that happens, I'm going to nosedive. So I've got to try and hug that inside rail to stay high in the wave if I have any chance at extending the nose ride. I know this is something that I wish I knew when I was younger because it is a difficult thing when we're told we've got to stay high in the wave for a nose ride. But when we start to advance with that and get into the steeper sections, being too high can uh, come at a cost and we actually slow ourselves down. So I hope that's helpful. Now that we've got the positioning though, let's run through a bit of a surf session. Let's get out in the water and figure out the technique for our nose riding as well. So the first thing that we wanna do, and I've spoken about this in previous videos, is making sure we eye off the section ahead. We need to make sure that we've got an idea of whether we're going to be ahead of the peak or going underneath it. And so whether we're going to position ourselves high or low on the wave for the nose ride. From here, we wanna position ourselves on the right spot of the wave at the right time. So timing is key. If we're going to be ahead of the peak, which is going to be most of the time, we wanna make sure we do a bottom turn to the top of the wave. We covered this in the previous Sunday Glide, but the setup is important here, where we want to be committing the inside rail into the water. So we drive our board up to the top third of the wave whilst we walk up to the midpoint of the board to set ourselves up in a good position to take our steps to the nose. What we then want to do once we hit the critical section and we're in the top third of the wave is of course hit the nose and this is where the finer nuances of nose riding come into play. Let's start with the stance. Our initial stance is something I often see people get wrong in the beginning because they're trying to put an equal distribution of weight on their front and back foot. What I'd like to think about is when we're hanging five, the front foot is just for show. We actually keep all of our weight centered over the back foot with the back knee bent slightly and the front foot poking out extended straight onto the nose. This really, really helps to keep the weight back and therefore we can nose right in sections that are quite shouldery or not quite as steep as well as in the critical sections. If we have all of our weight or more of our weight onto the front foot, we might as well be hanging 10 and therefore we'll need a really critical section. 
So this is why for a lot of people beginning to nose ride, their nose rides aren't working and they're nose diving because there's too much weight on the front foot. Now, in terms of the differences between the Hang 5 and the Hang 10, it all comes to the position of the wave that we're in. If we're further out on the shoulder, the board won't be able to take all our weight on the front of the nose and so we have to hang 5. When we get a decent amount of lift underneath the nose though, and therefore we're in a critical section of the wave, we can step through to the Hang 10. In the beginning, this is never going to feel right, it's never going to feel normal, so it has to just be something that we try. Be prepared to fall, give it a go, and over time you'll start to notice trends of what sections feel appropriate and which sections aren't. And as we step into the advanced stages of elongating our nose rides out, we start to look at the back foot position and altering that back foot position as well. What we do here is for coming into critical sections, we can go to a closer five or a hang 10, and then to elongate our nose rides, we can step that back foot back. We can even use the back foot to allow us to stall better. So if we find that we're exiting the critical section of the wave and we wanna slow ourselves down and drive ourselves up the face of the wave, we can step our back foot further back, adopt a wider stance, place a bit of weight onto the inside rail to drive us and turn us up the face of the wave as well. Now this is very technical and is something that I'll probably end up doing another video on because there's so much to it, but there's so much we can do to extend and elongate our nose rides as well. That also adds on top of everything we've spoken about with regards to positioning, our fin, and as well as the boards that we're using. Alrighty guys, I hope that was really handy and useful and gave you a lot of information about the nose ride and how to do it better for yourself. There's so many nuances to longboarding and to surfing in general, but I hope that this clarified a lot of the stuff that I wish I knew a bit earlier, especially, and the stuff that I constantly get asked because it is tricky. I'd love to see how it goes for you, so uh, make sure you let me know in the comments down below how all of this goes, and if there's any other questions about either this or future videos, please let me know in the comments below as well. But we'll leave it there today, and we'll catch you on the next one. And for anyone who is interested, I've just started to do longboard video analysis on top of the other components of the longboard coaching business. And it's just a really quick and easy way that you can send through some footage. I'll analyze it and send it back to you with voice notes, videos, annotations, and everything you need to make sure you've got a great idea of where your surfing's at and how you need to progress with what you're working on. Um, it's been a lot of fun and there's been some great feedback about how easy it is to just take that away and work on. So if you do feel like you're interested in anything like that, we'll leave an email down below in the uh, description. Feel free to contact us, whether you've got GoPro footage or footage from someone filming you on the beach, anything works and we can definitely get a plan sorted for you. So we'll leave it there for today. Um, we'll see you on the next one.